When we do statistics, we are going to use statistical software. One of the programs that we will be using in this course is called JASP. I have a series of videos that will introduce you to how to use the JASP program, but this will serve as a simple introduction to what it is for those of you who are unfamiliar, which is probably most of you. So what is JASP? JASP is a program that is great for doing inferential statistics and analysis. The benefits of JASP, unlike so many other programs, including Microsoft Excel or SPSS, is that JASP is free. It is an open source program, meaning that the skills that you learn in this course on how to use JASP are skills that you can take with you to your job. You will probably, likely, always have access to Excel, but many other high-end st statistical programs are proprietary, and you won't necessarily have access to those after you graduate. JASP is user-friendly, making it easy for you to learn and easy for me to teach. And in fact, you may find that you use JASP even more than use Excel, especially for inferential statistics. JASP is flexible. JASP uses Excel programs, however, in order to use data from Excel, it must be saved as a comma-separated value or CSV format. We can also open SPSS datasets directly in JASP. And JASP is functional. We could use programs like R with RStudio, but that has a high learning curve. It's difficult to learn and it's difficult to teach, and you almost need to be a computer programmer to use it for most analyses. Or we could use more user-friendly programs like SPSS, but those are very costly and proprietary, so you would not have access to that program after you graduate. JASP is both user-friendly and free, making it a very flexible solution for statistical analysis, especially for students in a basic business statistics course. Here's an example of what you will see when you open JASP. The starting point is going to be either the pancake stack or the hamburger stack. It's actually called the main menu icon located in the upper left. And when you click on that icon, we can choose open, data library, and then we'll, we'll do uh, t-tests. And we can open data sets that are already included in JASP, such as this kitchen rolls data set. Now you'll notice that one of the icons has a small green J, that's the JASP icon, and the other does not. The JASP icon indicates that an analysis has already been done in this data set, which can be very useful for learning how to use the program. Whereas the icon without the JASP icon will give you a raw data set that has had no analysis done on it so far. Well, let's click on the version that does not have the JASP icon. Here we are looking at the Kitchen Rolls data set. We see all of the variables in this box to the left. And to do an analysis, you'll find it's very simple. Let's find the variable mean NEO. This is the average NEO score. And move it into the variables box by clicking on the name of the variable and this arrow in between the boxes. What you will immediately notice is things begin appearing in the box to the right. We get progressive disclosure of the data. Let's find one more variable. It's a nominal level variable called rotation. You can also click and drag this variable into the variables box. Yet another way of getting a variable into the box for usage. And you also see new information appearing in the tables to the right. But you will notice that JASP interprets the level of the data giving you only the descriptive statistics that apply best to that level of data. So for instance, with the mean scale level variable, and we know that this is scale level because it has a ruler icon next to it, for the scale variable, we get 
mean and standard deviation, minimum, maximum. But for the categorical variable, where it would not make sense to have a mean, we do not get that information. We could add plots by opening up the plot option and selecting distribution plots. JASP will give us the plot that is appropriate for that variable at its level of measurement. So this is a quick exploration of JASP. You will be working through some specific tutorial videos which will show you the details of how to use the JASP program.